Assalamu alaikum, dear students. This is me, Ati Ghemad. Today we are going to study the topic uh, interface or resting stage. Introduction It is the longest part of the cell cycle where cell prepares itself for cell division. Interface, as we have already uh, studied in the previous uh, lecture, that the cell cycle consists of two main or major stages. The interface, the preparatory phase, and the cell division, the division phase, in which actual division of cell occurs. So, interface is the longest part of the cell cycle in which uh, the cell prepares itself for cell division. This interface it takes uh, much of the time of the whole cell cycle and uh, during uh, this interface the cell prepares itself for cell division it is the period between the end of one cell division and the start of the next division whenever one cell division is over so two or four cells are produced in case of mitosis, two cells are produced. In case of meiosis, four cells are produced. So, at the end of one cell division, the cells are produced. Now, from that uh, time when the cells are produced, till that time when the next division is started, that duration is basically the interface in which the cell prepares itself for the next division. So it is a period between the end of one cell division when new cells are produced and then uh, the start of next division and even the next division is not yet started. So the inter, uh, intermediate duration, the in between duration of the two cell divisions that is basically the interface in interface the chromosomes are in the form of thread like chromatin during the interface stage the chromosomes are not just like these chromosome x shape structure but rather they are in uncoiled shape uh, and uh, that is the thread like shape which is known as chromatin so, in interface, the chromosomes are in the form of thread-like chromatin, as it is shown here in the diagram. This is chromatin. This is thread-shaped structure. This is during the interface. It is not X-shaped chromosomes during the uh, interface. Rather, they are in the form of these threads. This thread-like structure is known as chromatin. But whenever this process will continue, so these uh, thread-like uh, um, chromatin, it will coil and will form X-shaped chromosome. Later on, we will study that in uh, the next uh, lectures. So, in interface, the chromosomes are in the form of thread-like chromatin. Typically, interface loss for at least 90% of the total time required for the cell cycle. As we have already discussed that it is the longest part of the uh, cell cycle and it takes around 90% of the total time which is required for the cell cycle. Now the teaching points, the events of interface. Interface is divided into three subphases. G1 phase, G stands for gap. So G1 is the first gap, then the S phase, this is the synthesis phase, and then the G2 phase, which is the second gap phase. We will study these three events, these three subphases one by one. Number one, G1 phase. Gap 1 phase. It is the first and longest subphase of the interface. In the interface, it is the first phase and it is the longest subphase. 
After its production, a cell starts its cycle in the G1 phase. Whenever the division is over, one division is over, so the cells are produced. Now these cells will enter into the uh, G1 phase. During this phase, the newly produced cell grow in size. During the G1 phase, the cell will grow in size. And why it will grow? Because, because it will produce various proteins, RNA, uh, organelles will be doubled for the cell division and uh, various enzymes will be synthesized. So as a result, uh, the cell will grow in size because new materials are produced inside the cell. So after its production, a cell starts a cycle in the G1 phase. During this phase, the newly produced cell grows in size. Cell increases its supply of proteins. Cell produces new proteins, RNA, and the number of organelles will be increased. Now for the division process, uh, to divide one cell into two or four, the organelles must be doubled or four times. So during the G1 phase, new proteins, RNA, as well as the organelles are produced. Suppose there are 10 mitochondria for a cell, so the number will be doubled to uh, 20. Similarly, all other organelles numbers will be increased. So cell increases supply of proteins, RNA, and number of organelles such as mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, etc., etc. The number of all organelles will be increased. This phase is also marked by the synthesis of various enzymes that are required in the next phase, S phase, for the replication of DNA. Now for the replication of DNA, which is the next phase, we will study that is S phase, this is, that is the synthesis phase. So for that process, the DNA replication process, various enzymes are required to catalyze to speed up the process of replication process of DNA. So in this phase, um, synthesis of various enzymes will occur which are required for the next phase, the replication of DNA. We will move toward the diagram. Now, these are the newly divided cells. Now this cell will pass through the G1 phase during this phase, growth in size will occur as we have already discussed and chemical changes will occur. We have already discussed that various proteins will be produced, organelles will be uh, produced, the number of organelles will be increased. Similarly, synthesis of RNA will occur, ribosomes and various enzymes will be produced. So this is the G1 phase. It starts from here and it will move towards this cycle. So during the G1 phase, growth, chemical changes, and synthesis of RNA, ribosomes, and enzyme will occur. Now the S phase, the synthesis phase. In this phase, the cell will duplicate its chromosome. The cell will double its chromosomes. But uh, for the doubling of chromosome, first the DNA should be doubled because chromosomes are made of DNA and histone proteins. The DNA is basically wrapped around the histone proteins. So as a result, this X-shaped chromosome is produced. So during the synthesis phase, the cell will duplicate its chromosome by replication copying of DNA of each chromosome. Suppose in humans, there are 46 chromosomes. Now, in S phase, the DNA of these 46 chromosomes will be replicated so that to produce the DNA of 92 chromosomes. So, during the S phase, the chromosome will be duplicated and for that duplication of chromosomes, first the DNA will be duplicated. Its copies will be made. As a result, each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. Now the G2 phase, the second gap phase. 
uh, before proceeding towards the G2 phase, we will have a look at the diagram. This is the S phase from here till here. What happens during this S phase? Duplication of chromosomes occur. And for that, duplication of chromosomes means replication of chromosomes means copying of chromosomes. Replication of DNA will occur first. Whenever the DNA is doubled, then the histone proteins will be doubled and the DNA will wrap around the histone proteins and chromosomes will be formed and uh, the number of chromosomes will be doubled. During this process also, growth in size will occur. Now, the third phase, the G2 phase. In the G2 phase, cell prepare proteins that are essential for cell division mainly for the production of spindle fibers required for cell division. The actual division will occur later on. We will study that in the next uh, lecture. In the G2 phase, various proteins are produced and those, protein, those proteins are basically are required to produce spindle fibers. And those spindle fibers, we will study later, that will attach with the chromosomes and the chromosomes will be pulled apart. So, during G2 phase, the cell prepare various proteins and those proteins are utilized to produce various spindle fibers and those spindle fibers are then used in the actual process of cell division which, which we will study later that uh, these spindle fibers pull the chromosome apart during the process of cell division. So, these are shown here. These are spindle fibers. So during G2 phase, the proteins are prepared which form these spindle fibers, these fibers. Now another point is that a final event in the interface occur with the replication of the centrioles and their movement to either end of the nucleus. Now this is a, a final event of this G2 phase. And as well as this is the final event of the whole interface that uh, the replication of centriole will occur and their movement will take place to either end of the nucleus. Now these are centrioles. Initially these are two. They will duplicate to, to make another copy. This is another copy. And then the another copy will start moving towards the other end of the nucleus. And then later on, the spindle fibers will be produced from these centrioles. That will reach there. And another one is here. They will form spindle fibers which will attach with these chromosomes, which we will study later in the division phase. So final event in the interface occur with the replication of centrioles. These centrioles, initially it was one. Now it is divided into two. Uh, another copy. These are basically two in number, but there are only one uh, uh, centriole which consists of two uh, perpendicularly uh, placed centrioles. So, this is the final event of the interface in which the centriole will double and one will move towards the opposite end. At the same time, microtubules spindle fibers appear radiating, emitting from the area of centriole at each end. Now, as uh, we have recently discussed, that these uh, centrioles will double, then one pair will move toward this end, and then these spindle fibers will start formation. So, these spindle fibers will be produced from these centrioles. After the G2 phase of the interface, cell enter into division phase. Now, the G2 phase is the last phase. Whenever this is completed, so uh, then the cell will enter into the next major phase, which is the division phase. That is the mitosis and meiosis process. Either mitosis or meiosis will occur. Now, there is another phase which is not known as G0 phase or G0 phase. 
those cells that have temporarily or permanently stopped dividing are said to have entered into a state of quiescence in activity called G0 phase. Now there are certain cells in our body which uh, very rarely divide and uh, those cells uh, become inactive after division. So those cells for example neuron cells of our uh, body uh, they uh, do not divide frequently. So they will enter into uh, a G0 phase which is inactive phase. The, it means that whenever they are produced for the first time they will grow in size they will pass through these uh, processes the interface uh, the first step of the interface which is the G1 phase and then the division will be stopped and the cell will become inactive and that stage is known as G0 phase or G0 phase diagrammatically it is shown here this that whenever the mitosis occur, the new cells too are produced. These are the two cells. Now some of the cells will just uh, enter into this G1 phase. From here, they will not further grow. But uh, we can say that uh, they will uh, not even enter into a G1 phase. They will not divide throughout their life. And they will enter into the G0 phase they will become inactive and whenever then the division process is required so then they can enter into the G1 phase. So there are various types of cells. Some of the cells divide continuously so they continuously uh, pass through the cell cycle. After division they enter into the G1 phase then they enter into the GS phase and then G2 phase and this process is uh, continuously performed. But there are certain cells which uh, whenever they are produced so they um, immediately enter into the G0 phase. And there are also certain cells which enter into the G1 phase but after that they stop division and uh, they stay inactive. So this in inactivity stage this is called as G0 phase or G0 phase. So this is all about today's lecture. Next time see you with a new lecture. Take care. Allah Hafiz.